Welcome to part four of my four part series of cycling the length of New Zealand. As you can probably guess, this is the final episode in the series. I'm feeling pretty excited to share with you what this landscape looks like in New Zealand. I mean, New Zealand is literally renowned for its landscape and going from the West Coast through Otago to Southland, I mean, they are they have the best landscape that I've ever seen. So we'll start off with the story itself and then we'll finalize with some advice and some facts and some conclusion to the whole journey and how I feel, how it affects me today, two years later, looking back at this. So it all started back in December of 2017. Just for reference, it finished, the trip was finished in February 2018. From where we left off in Hokitika, I arrived there around the end of January to the beginning of February. And from Hokitika, where we left off, I followed the West Coast Wilderness Trail and then it finished in the town of Ross. And I continued along a lot of the West Coast Trail. And as I mentioned before in my last episode, the debris that fell on the road from this massive cyclone that tore through the whole of the, the southern range and through the whole of west the west coast region was pretty severe and it left a lot of debris on the road it was insane but on the plus side it meant that the road was pretty much traffic free or at least it only had people who were leaving trying to go around because they had like bookings that they had to get to and they had to drive all the way around and take a, this other pass over the mountains called Arthur's Pass and they couldn't get through the Haast Pass. I had a great time riding along this beautiful road and the scenery is in incredible because it's a massive rainforest. In the entire west coast is pretty much one giant rainforest and it's, it's just breathtaking. It's super green and lush and it's very humid. So keep that in mind that you do want to carry rain jacket and breathable clothes, clothes because you're going to get drenched uh, usually every day if you're on a bike. And then the sun can come out when you least expect it. And then you're completely like over overheated all over again. So it's it, it, it sort of goes in a weird cycle like that. From there, I camped not far from a, a town which was called Franz Joseph Glacier. And I was kind of chuffed about that because my name is Joseph and it's literally spelt as the exact same way as this town. And I didn't actually go to see the glacier because the roads getting to there were closed. And then the next day I tried to get to Fox Glacier, managed to get there, even though the road was really quite full of traffic of people leaving the town like I was saying and at Fox Glacier I managed to find a couch surfer to stay with for the night and he was saying that I got to be careful with the water in the area because it, it was reported to have E. coli bacteria in it and he also told me that a lot of the cell towers are going to be knocked out because of the storm so there was no cell phone coverage. I think there's no cell phone coverage regardless when you get to Bruce Bay and you go all the way up to about Hawaii. It was combined with the storm knocking out the cell phone towers and that was a little bit that was a bit nerve-wracking that I was gonna have no cell phone coverage. Anyway I left that guy's place and I continued towards Bruce Bay and Bruce Bay was lovely. Uh, the road was completely destroyed which was kind of strange to see and I really enjoyed that it was it was so wild. From Bruce Bay, you only see about 5 to 10 kilometers of the coastline. And then as you continue, you go back inland a little bit. And then later on, you will arrive at Night Point. I, I guess this is just some random creek. I, I, I don't know. Um, I, I, don't, I don't really know. At least it's not, you know, just a creek. It's like a really random one, you know? And uh, Knights Point is a nice lookout. You can finally see some more of the coastline. And the, and it's kind of a little bit European looking. It kind of snakes its way up through the, the edges of the, the mountains. 
and then it drops straight back down to the beach and it's really really flat for a while and then you arrive at the town at Haast. As I was crossing one of the bridges into Haast, well the only bridge what I'm talking about, there's only one road, I noticed that the actual Haast river was completely stuffed with water. It was insane how much water was dropped from the storm. The storm completely changed the, the whole experience. Haast is the last point that you get to see the coastline. And then I stayed at a backpacker slash hostel slash hotel, which was the cheapest place in town. And I met another, a nice guy who was from England and he was on a two year working visa. And he was sort of giving me advice about the working visa I had. And then the next day, the rain sort of died down, but it was unpredictable. I mean, in, in this area, the weather radar was pretty much close to useless sometimes. And sometimes it would say 80% rain, and then you'd get no rain. Sometimes it said 10% chance of rain, and you'd have loads of rain on that day. So keep that in mind, that the weather can change, and it's very unpredictable around there. So as I continued up towards the Haas Pass, my spoke broke. Let me try and show you. I had to bend it inwards because I can't break it off. Um, this footage isn't going to see YouTube for a very long time. Because I have so much footage I have to still edit and upload. And basically the whole pass has loads and loads of waterfalls coming down it. So it is really gorgeous, but it's, I think it's pretty dangerous at the same time. To mention some advice, uh, keep in mind that this road is quite famous and because all the debris was cleared, this was the point where the tourism started to come back. Later on, I arrived at the town of Macarora, I believe, and then I got to the Lake Wanaka and I camped by the lake there and met some other cyclists and had a nice evening chatting with them. They were heading back along the West Coast Road and I was giving them some advice for what they were going to experience. And then the next day, the sun came out and it was, it was so breathtaking. The scenery completely changed. So it went from rainforest to almost desert. Well, at least it was very dry and very Mediterranean, like Mediterranean meaning very salty and dry. And it was, it was beautiful. It was such a contrast to go from rain to desert. And as I continued, I woke up very early in the morning and I didn't have a lot of sun on me because the mountains was blocking me. But then I arrived at this small little passageway called the Neck. It's like a valley and then the road cuts through. And then you arrive at the other side of the mountain range and you are overlooking the Lake Hawaii. And it's lovely. It's really, really beautiful. Keep in mind, again, once it was around 9 to 10 a.m., and this is in summertime, the traffic started to come up again. There was a lot more coaches and motorcycles are not that bad, but because the road is so narrow you, and you share it with so many different vehicles, it, it's a bit nerve wracking to cycle your tiny, thin little bike on this road. So other than that, it was really beautiful and there is no other choice of road to take. So then I arrived at the town of Lake Kauai and Lake Wanaka. And around there, there was a lovely bike path that I got to go on. And it's a very short one, but it just gets you off that main road for a little bit. And it was beautiful. I got some really beautiful photos. And the whole area there is absolutely breathtaking. And then I camped at the town of Wanaka. There was a little campground there. And I really, really needed a shower quite desperately. I then found a little back road to avoid the main roads. And then... I just con continued to keep doing that. I just tried to avoid the main road and I was trying to aim to head towards Cromwell that day. I tried to avoid this pass that heads towards Queenstown. I just, I cut that out of my whole route completely. And originally I was planning to follow the tour of Aotearoa. And from there on, I decided to not follow it because it was just taking me through more and more tourism. So what ended up happening is I found a tiny road in the middle of the countryside in the middle of nowhere. And this stunning road was called the Thompson Gorge Road. It was amazing. It was beautiful. I loved it. I thought it was really, really stunning. 
And then when I arrived out of the gorge, I door did a bit of door knocking and I asked for some work because I was starting to run out of money. And I found a family who helped me, they gave me a job to do some garden work on their land and they were farmers. And I was extremely grateful for that. I, I did stay in the town of o Omakau, Omakau uh, just briefly for one night. And then I stayed at their place for about three nights, I believe. And that covered me for the next two weeks to finish my trip and then get my paycheck that I do receive from Google. And I was really grateful for all of that whole synchronicity, so to speak. And they were a lovely family. And I remember that the father didn't have so much liking towards me because of my younger generation thoughts about things. And I get it. He's from a different generation. Um, but his son, I remember we watched on TV briefly, like the Simpsons show, and we were sort of bonding, talking about the Simpsons. So anyway, the next day I continued to head further south, of course, to try and get and finish this, this whole tour. And I arrived on a special road called the Dunstan Heritage Trail. And this road's really incredible. It's actually where they filmed a lot of the Lord of the Rings scenes where they do those big battles with the orcs and the elves and all that. This spot is really special. I will show you some of the scenery that I was going through. It was quite tough to cycle through because the entire road is basically gravel for about a hundred kilometers or more. And the whole trail was about 180 kilometers of no shops, no gas stations, just a few houses scattered here and there, like vacation homes. And it's very dry and very beautiful. And the weather can change within a snap of your fingers. There was a lot of cattle grids that I had to walk through. So you had to close a lot of gates. Other than that, it was really beautiful. And keep, a, keep an eye out for cows and bulls when you're walking through when you're walking, <laughs> when you're riding your bike through these areas. And eventually I got to the end of the Heritage Trail and I arrived at a small, small little town or gas station town, if you want to call it that, called Clark's Junction. And I then found this beautiful lake that I'm going to struggle pronouncing. I will try and show this footage where I actually pronounce the actual name from when I was there. Lake. Mahangi Rangi, I think it's called. And then from this beautiful lake, I continued to head into the forest, which is pretty much completely man-made. This road snakes its way down the river, and it's it's just really, really beautiful. And I tried to take a lot of the country road as much as I could. I was fed up with Highway 1. I was fed up with New Zealand traffic. I, I was not enjoying the traffic in New Zealand, personally. But it's such a contrast. When you're on a main road, there's a lot of traffic. When you're off the main road, there's nobody. It's such a weird contrast in New Zealand. And I, it's something I haven't really experienced elsewhere, maybe a bit in the States, but even in Australia, when I was riding across there, even on the main roads, they were very quiet and they were a little bit wider. So you felt a little bit more safer. And New Zealand doesn't have that same feeling for me personally. So anyway, I stayed with a nice guy in Milton. And he was a, I think he was a lawyer and he was showing me a lot of, or he took me to the pub and showed me some of the local scene, which was really cool. And I really enjoyed staying with him. He was a really nice guy, very nice host. So from there, I continued through more of the countryside and I eventually arrived back at the coast looking towards the Pacific Ocean, uh, which was lovely instead of the Tasman Sea. Tiny little portion of the road that straddles some of the coastline and then you start to head back inland again and I found some lovely dirt roads to take which was really really stunning and it's it's really beautiful around there highly recommend to just like hang out on the beach there for a bit at Kaka Point it's very very nice so I'm, I'm tr I am literally pushing against it and it won't it literally won't move it's completely seized up in there so I was pedaling along and it was unscrewing itself that's how bad it was. Now, this is where I say thank you to Kerry. If it was not for Kerry letting me use the pedals, I probably would not have been able to get to where I'm going today. This is the part where I really felt like I was in the Catlins coastline. The Catlins area, or the Catlin coast, is really, really lovely. 
again, it's more built for cars, but you can still enjoy it by bike. It's really, really beautiful. If you have a look at my route on my website, you go to uh, theonegoodroad.com slash map, and you scroll down and have a look for New Zealand. And you can have a look at the exact route that I took through New Zealand instead of the tour of Aotearoa means the land of the long white cloud. It's like the original Maori name of New Zealand. So from there, I took this really long detour away from the road and I eventually was arriving in this small little town of basically nothing. But there was there was a couch surfer I stayed with and there was another couch surfer staying there. And I was really grateful because that day I was so done with the winds that I was having to battle. There was so strong headwinds. Looking back at a lot of, lot of this footage of New Zealand, there were times where I was really frustrated and irritated. And it was just fewer, via the, the experience of itself. Like cycling and bicycle touring in general, it has a lot of lows that you have to go through mentally and both physically and i feel like a lot of people don't really share this very often on their trips what i mean is they're always sharing the good stuff and not really a contrast of the the rough stuff that you have to go through and i was i was basically being a little b-i-t-c-h about a lot of things i was i realize that now so that's something i'm reflecting on these days two years ahead of this whole trip is how much I've progressed from this whole journey. They were the couch surfer, like I said, and he was a, a sheep shearer. He looked after the sheep and was hosting this other person at the same time. And we went to this like little rock carving art thing in town, which was kind of fun hanging out with the locals and hanging out with this person. Also this person I, uh, who was there staying over with this couch surfer, her and I went to Curio Bay which you can see dolphins and the famous penguins, which have that beautiful yellow crest on the back of their head. The petrified forest isn't as cool, in my opinion, but the penguins are really, really cool and definitely worth seeing. Anyway, the next day I headed towards Slopes Point and I was done with my journey of cycling the whole length of New Zealand, 3000 kilometers from north to south. I was really over the moon about it. The weather was beautiful, even though during that day it was raining. So I was really nervous if it was going to be like sunny or I had no idea what I was going to expect. But the sun came out. It was beautiful. And I felt really relieved that I was finally done. Anyway, that is pretty much it. From there on, I I was done with the wind. I arrived at the main road and I was I was hitchhiking from there on. And I arrived in the town of Gore. I sold my bike to a local in the area. And I was starting to hitchhike instead. So that's a whole different story. And now I just want to spend some time reflecting and talking about how it's shaped me today. And why I think these journeys are so important for other people to experience. It really changes your whole perspective on where you might be going in life or basically your perspective on the world in general. Personally, I feel that New Zealand in general, the nature that they have in this country, in this part of the world, it is phenomenal. No question about it. It's very special that the contrast that they have of nature going from like one set of a biome to another and it's completely different. Absolutely stunning. But some things that people aren't, aren't really looking at or keeping in mind is the destruction that man is doing to a beautiful country or to this beautiful place of New Zealand. It still has some absolutely phenomenal places and I'm not trying to knock it off. Like the, the conservation that they're doing is very special and what they're doing is good. And they're trying to like build all these bike paths and connect them all so you can cycle the whole length of New Zealand without even going on a road. Like it's it's amazing that project. And there's tons of other projects like the hydro dams and and trying to be um, a carbon neutral country. The North Island used to be completely filled to the brim with forest, just raw rainforest. Now about seventy percent of that rainforest has been cut and destroyed for agriculture and replaced with sheep, which are not native to the landscape at all. 
And it's just something we need to be thinking about, I think, is our impact on the environment. And, and I just want to leave it at that, really. What do you want to do when you visit there? And how do you want to experience this place? Do you really want to experience it as the tourist does? Or do you want to experience it as a local? Or maybe go back in time and really think about the historic moments that happened back then to where it is today. There will be a slight change of content in the next year or so on my channel because I have different passions that are developing, I warn you. But definitely stay subscribed. A lot of the same philosophy will be staying here and evolving. That's it. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing this adventure. And I really hope this inspires you to go out there and have your own adventure.